Duke controls Jeremy Roach with the ball. North Carolina starts out in man-to-man. -man. And immediately Armando Baycott on Bancaro. Bancaro's first shot puts Duke on top. Wendell Moore. And Roach has done an exceptional job distributing the ball and taking care of it. And a three on the way, and the bottom is found from A.J. Griffin. Five for five against Louisville, had 22 in that one. When he gets an open look, he's the only power five player this year that's shooting over 50% from three. And Carroll for three. If Baycott is going to help that much off of... Griffin has helped as well. Here's Paolo outside. You can work a whole possession, not get a shot that easy. Baycott goes in the air, and Mark Williams finishes, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play. A huge boost. His last six games averaging 13 points, nine rebounds, three and a half blocks. Just got an angle. Was able to just drop step and get to the other side of the rim. Wanted to go after Armando Baycott, make him guard on the perimeter. Puff Johnson just into the game, and Griffin overpowers him off the inbounds play, and Duke's up 13 to two. The question now is, to whom does Carolina go for a score? Got a switch. Is it Maddox? It is. Sharp shooter when he played at Oklahoma. Yeah, that's his 50th three on the season. Carolina's got three guys that have made 40 or more threes on the year, and AJ Griffin three, but they've made just one of their first seven. Caleb Love switched off onto Bancaro. Soft touch from Mark Williams, and he's got five. Is a steel machine. Deals with nine thefts in his last three games. Manic with a man in his face. Leafy working on, he forces the turnover. Davis just lost his footing and fell down. Now Moore on Manic. And the layup. Field goal percentage defense and three-point defense. Well, their defending of the three has been excellent. And Wait. the shooting of the three is not bad either from Trevor Keels, his first bucket of the night. Love, cross-court pass. Duke gets a hand on it, now in transition, Bancaro to Moore, and one! He's a pick-and-pop guy, he's a perimeter big that stretches the floor, it's just a different, different team makeup. Back to work is A.J. Griffin. H. Jones is checked in, number 34 for Duke, here's Perlin Walton getting heels in the air, but Joey Baker with the steal, another turnover for the Tar Heels. Baker gets love in the air and scores. That was a great shot fake. Came off two feet. Shot fake, let the defender fly by. And that's what North Carolina needs is Armando Baycott to assert himself. Cardinals see if they can put together a Good another fake. productive trip. Here's Manning. Boy, Theo John wide open. They missed him the first time. He should go to work on Baycott, see if he can pick up that third foul. Griffin working on Manic. Manic made it tough and it's not tough enough as Griffin is in the double figures with 11. Five turnovers. Then Carroll driving, going up strong, gets a shot blocked. Leaky Black on the push. They come. A better matchup for North Carolina put Leaky Black on Van Caro. There is Armando Baycott's first rebound. The average is nearly 13 per game. Manic from three. Manic. Somehow salvaged that. That looks like a turnover about to happen. R.J. Davis absorbs some contact and scores. Davis misses. Baycott offensive rebound blocked by Mark Williams. Let's see if they do it this time. And Carroll hot to the outside. Acrobatic shot by Wendell Moore Jr. He. Black cut off, now Armando's got it. Manic and open three. Carolina this season has not always reacted particularly well to pressure, but that was a great shot fake. Two minutes in this game. If Carolina can get a couple of stops, couple of scores, this game will look a lot different in the second half. As he has throughout the first half. Par heels 
draw closer. Bancaro's five points that you mentioned, Jay, came in under two minutes in the first half, and he went over 18 and a half minutes and didn't get anything. Well, Bancaro's trying to get down in the post, but Black is fighting him. Griffin does shoot at this time, and he is feeling it. They started this game. Oh, and it's been A.J. Griffin. Now he's got Manic able to drive it. Griffin pulls up and scores. With his family when he learned the news. We keep our thoughts with Dan Schulman, the entire Schulman family. The baseline out of bounds. Mark Williams with the flush. Nice little back screen by Jeremy Roach. Needed a switch or at least to bump that cutter. Didn't get it. Caleb Love finally. And Caro was trying to work on Leaky Black, as you said. And Leaky did a good job on defense. Jeremy Rose penetrating and scoring. Brady Manick having to stay in front of him, but he had to give him space that allowed that little floater. Good move. RJ Davis, a beautiful shot over the outstretched arm of the great shot blocker, William. About making a play against the pressure. And Caro gets Leaky in the paint and can't get it to go, but the tip is good for Wendell Moore. He's got 23 points. A career high. He only averages nine, but you've been sensing that he is coming an offensive four. Oscar Shibway in the next game. He's been in a category by himself, but Baycott hasn't been far behind. Heels a great give to Theo John for the flush. There's some teammates. Baker's got it inside. We get a three-second call pretty soon. Joey doesn't get out of there. Instead, he turns it over. Manic pass bait, three ball. Called on Ben Carroll. I saw John react. I think he thought the foul was called on him, but he was called on Powell. Strong drive, and there's Love with the bucket. They played, I was at Auburn the other night watching Alabama and Auburn go against each other. Team in the country escaped Georgia today. Texas A&M coming in next Saturday. Carolina needing something to better. Oh, Leaky Black with a strong take. Fabulous finish. And Leaky Black is one of the seniors for the Tar Heels. We didn't have another year if things worked out. He chose so. Jeremy Roach with the answer. And it's toward the 10 minute mark remaining here in Chapel Hill. Duke by 20. Baycott, a chance for the three point play. Back stops the fast break opportunity, jumping in the passing lane with the ball still winds up in Griffin's hand. Williams offensive four pass. Thank Carroll. Finishes it off. Mark Williams. He didn't have the easy stick back look out to the three-point line because Carolina's not thinking about playing further defense after the offensive board. Man, I mean Jeremy Roach just got taken apart by Armando Baycott at that top of the key screen. It's a dangerous area for Barton. Roach got on the business end of it, but that's the way to answer it. Just go right to the bucket and score. A little horn set for North Carolina. Less adventurous as Roach got picked again. And North Carolina has not had success in trying to back cut or pressure release against this Duke pressure. Ben Carroll along the baseline school. And get to work as a power player. And there's Kerwin Walton, and a much needed three ball for him. Every time the Tar Heels have tried to put together a little streak, somebody's had an answer. Often it's been Griffin. It was not this time, but it was Mark Williams who did indeed drop it on everybody's head and has a chance for a three point play. Relocation three after the offensive rebound, but he's been in the paint much more. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski in his final trip. He's not just being a standstill shooter, he's had to bang bodies inside in the post too. From the corner, it is Trevor Keel. As you, as you think back, Jay, it's happened from time to time. As Keels just knocks down another one to add more insult to the injury, including Hubert Davis. Only three of them have won their first game against Duke, and Hubert will not join that list tonight. R.J. Davis. Back into the games and young guards have checked in for North Carolina as they play out the strain. There is Blake going strong. Bates Jones with the offensive rebound. North Carolina will have to try to regroup from. They've had a couple of blowout losses, but those have come on the road. Blown out by Wake Forest and by Miami in back-to-back -back games. Not long after Coach K announced his retirement, I believe it was his first interview.
And during the course of that conversation, I asked him how he told Michael that he was going to retire. Pretty nice of him. My grandfather never consulted me on his retirement. He just did it. <laughs> I didn't say he consulted. He just, I think informed would I'm be the proper word. <laughs> and Coach K's last ride into the Dean Smith Center. And time has run out. 87 to 67.